Welcome to Cyberum Online CCNSP Training Module 8. In this module, we'll be learning about VPN. So this will be the agenda of our presentation. We'll be talking about the technology comparison matrix. We'll be talking about treachery tunneling. We'll be talking about different VPN scenarios. We'll have a look at the configuration and VPN failover, mobile VPN and SSL VPN. Now what is a VPN? So the, it's a virtual private network and a VPN works by using the shared public infrastructure while maintaining privacy through security procedures and tunneling protocols. So it actually secures a point-to-point -point connection through public infrastructure. The VPN extends communications to regional and isolated offices. It establishes secure links with business partners and its main motto is to secure the links connecting your regional and isolated offices. It significantly decreases the cost of communications for an increasingly mobile workforce and to transform the daily method of doing business faster than any other technology. Now, the, one of the protocols which is used in VPN is IPsec, and that constitutes the major part of VPN. So what is IPsec? An IPsec is a framework that is built into various security products to provide end-to-end -end security in wide area networking communications. Using strong encryption and public key cryptography, IPsec can secure data links that would otherwise be insecure and susceptible to exploitation. Now, there are two modes of operation in IPsec. The first one is transparent mode. In transparent mode, only the payload of the message is encrypted. And the transparent mode or transport mode only supports host-to-host -host connectivity. Now, as a result of which, transport mode is faster, but it offers a bit less security. Whereas if you consider tunnel mode, it's more secure because the payload, the header, and even the routing information are all encrypted. And it's a bit slower compared to transport mode. But tunnel mode can be used in three scenarios, host to gateway or remote access or client to site VPNs, gateway to gateway or site to site VPNs. And the last one is host to host whereas in case of an uh, individual host to host. So you can consider <coughs> the first one as host to guest or host to gateways, this particular device connecting to this particular gateway via VPN. Then the second scenario, gateway to gateway, which is site to site, which means the VPN between these two routers or two offices. And the other one is host to host, wherein you can consider an end computer creating a tunnel with an end computer. So it's an end to end encryption in between two end computers. So that is a good example of a host to host tunnel. Now, IPsec is typically used to attend confidentiality, integrity, and authentication in the transport of data across insecure channels. If implemented properly, IPsec provides a private channel for sending and exchanging vulnerable data, whether the data is email, FTP, news feeds, partner and supply chain data, medical records, or any other type of TCP IP based data. Let's have a look at the L2TP protocol. This is another method of doing VPN. So L2TP acts like a data link layer protocol for tunneling network traffic. It is in fact a layer 5 protocol station and uses the UDP port number 1701. IPsec is used to secure L2TP packets. So it's not a pure L2TP which Cyberum offers you because L2TP itself is not very secure. So we use IPsec to tunnel L2TP packets. That's why it's more secure in Cyberum. An L2TP VPN is made up by three parts. It comprises a point-to-point -point protocol, which is PPP. Authentication protocols, it can be PAP, CHAP, MSCHAP version 1 and version 2. It also uses MPPE, and L2TP uses UDP to transport the PPP data. This is often encapsulated in IPsec for encryption instead of MPPE. Let's have a look at the PPTP protocol. It's another way of connecting VPN in a client to site scenario, wherein the PPTP protocol works on client server model. PPTP uses TCP port number 1723 
for its control connection and GRE IP protocol 47 for the PPP data. A PPTP VPN is made up by three parts. It comprises of point-to-point -point protocol or PPP. It comprises of authentication protocols like PAP, CHAP, MSCHAP version 1 and version 2. It also comprises of GRE and MPPE. Let's have a quick technology comparison metrics. So we say that if you're using IPsec as your protocol for VPN, the security level is high and this can be deployed in remote access and site-to-site -site scenario, which means you can either use a client-to-site -site scenario or a site-to-site -site scenario. In case of remote access, CyberOM VPN client is required and it's a licensed product. In case of site-to-site, -site, CyberOM is compatible with all major VPN gateways, which support standard IPsec architecture. In case of SSL VPN, the security level is pretty high as well, like IPsec, but this can be deployed only in remote access or can be used as a web-based portal as well without installing any SSL VPN client. And if you are going to use the SSL VPN client, it's free of cost. You don't have to pay any license for that. L2TP protocol, the security level is high because we don't do pure L2TP. CyberOM do L2TP over IPsec and that's why we say the security level is high but this can be deployed in remote access scenario only. No third party VPN client is required as Windows 2000 onward always have inbuilt L2TP VPN client. And the fourth one is PPTP the security level is moderate it's not advisable to go with a PPTP rather use L2TP because it's encapsulated with IPsec. So you can see the PPTP can be deployed in remote access scenario only. No third party VPN client is required as all Windows OS have inbuilt PPTP VPN client. Now let's have a look what is threat free tunneling. Now major features of CyberOM threat free tunneling are all VPN traffic can be controlled through firewall. All layer 8 firewall controls can be applied to VPN traffic, which means you can have an additional layer of authentication for your users for the VPN traffic. We can scan the VPN traffic for virus and spam. We can also have an intrusion check and apply IPS policy on VPN. We can do content filtering for VPN traffic, and we can also do bandwidth management on VPN traffic. By default, all VPN tunnels will fall under this zone, which is the VPN zone. And there's an automatic zone created by default in CyberOM, which is VPN. And this is a non-editable zone. Now, there are some default VPN firewall rules. You can see VPN to VPN, VPN to DMZ, VPN to WAN, and VPN to LAN. You need to create all these VPN to respective zones so that the VPN traffic from your computer to the end computer flows properly. So you might have an established tunnel between two cyber rooms or between cyber room and any other device or between a client to site but your traffic will not flow through the tunnel until unless you have these rules created. So I'll just draw a small diagram and I'll take you to the whiteboard to explain the VPN zones and the firewall rules how it exactly works in cyber room. So let's Assume that this is my cyber room and I've got a switch connected to that. Sorry, and I've got my LAN computers over here, and this cyber room is connected to internet. So I'll just all right now I've got another cyber room, maybe I'll call it as BO or branch office. And this one I'll call it as head office, which is HO. And this has also got a switch connected to it. And it has got the computers. And it is also connected to internet. All right. Now, when you set up a VPN, you're actually setting up a site-to-site -site VPN. So you're actually having an internet link connecting directly. So you've got a VPN between this branch office and this head office. So this zone is called VPN. Even though the traffic is coming from internet, still it's called VPN zone when you're connected via VPN. 
Now let's assume that this is your LAN zone. So you know, all the computers, this is your LAN switch and this is your LAN zone. So you need two rules. When you go out like this, you need a rule LAN to VPN for the traffic to go out like this. And similarly, you need an inbound rule here for this particular branch of your cyber room, VPN to LAN. And similarly, to send traffic out, you need another rule, LAN to VPN. And here also, you need an incoming rule, or I'll say, VPN to LAN. And you're pretty much done. Now, let's assume if you have another rule zone called DMZ, you need the same rules, DMZ to VPN and VPN to DMZ if the other side wants to access DMZ computers or servers as well. Now, in certain scenarios, you might find that this branch office guys want to route everything through the tunnel and want to apply web filtering policies on this cyber home so that they want to route everything via this internet connection like this. So traffic will go out like this and go out to the internet like that. In that case, you need another rule, VPN to WAN, because traffic is coming from VPN and going out to the internet. Security policies are applied on this particular cyber room for central monitoring. Now, we don't cover much of that scenario in this course. These are some of the advanced configurations which we cover in the expert level course, which is CCNSE. So that's pretty much the basics of zones and how the rules are created and in CyberRoom. I'll say you'll have to go ahead and create those respective rules after you create VPN or else traffic will not flow from here to here. So if you try and this guy tries to ping this guy across like this, is ping this guy, this ping will not flow through until and unless you have a VPN to LAN and LAN to VPN rule on these sites. All right, so I'll delete this and let's go back to the presentation. All right, so let's have a look at the different VPN scenarios. So the first scenario is a remote access deployment scenario or a client to site scenario and the supported VPN technologies for this scenario are L2TP, PPTP, IP second SSL VPNs. You've got a roaming user, let's say I'm in the United States now and I want to access London office, my mail server is in London, somewhere I'm on a business trip to US. So I'll be using my VPN client to connect back to my head office and access the mail server which might be located here. So in that special case, you need a client to site VPN. And these are the supported technologies. You can use any one of these technologies. The next deployment scenario is a site to site deployment scenario where I've got a branch office or a head office and I've got a branch office over here and you create a tunnel between these two offices so that these guys over here can access these guys over here. Now, this particular device can be any third-party VPN server. It can be CyberRoom or any other third-party device which supports standard IPsec. Now, this scenario is most useful in filing scenarios. It's secure communication between head office and branches. And you can also deploy it in a hub and spoke VPN topology. Now, even in this VPN scenario, you can have granular control saying that this particular IP address will not be allowed to this particular address. IP address via the firewall rule. So you need to create a rule here, VPN to LAN, source this destination, this IP, block it or deny it. So we have those granular controls in VPN via the firewall rules. Well, let's have a look at the VPN configuration wizard. To make your life simple, we have given you a VPN configuration wizard if you don't want to follow the manual process. You can always take the route of this wizard. Now, th there are certain default IPsec VPN policies given to you. We've given you a default branch office policy. When do you use that? When you use it, when you have the branch office cyber room to initiate a VPN tunnel. You've got the default head office policy. And when do you want to use that? When you want head office cyber room to respond to VPN tunnel. You've got a default L2TP for L2TP Road Warrior VPN tunnel. And you've got default remote access for IPsec Road Warrior VPN tunnel. 
Now this is the configuration wizard. So if you want to use the wizard, you get a screen like this and you can name it anything and give a small description. You can click on the start option and then you get three options. Whether you want to deploy it in a remote access scenario or a site to site scenario or a host to host scenario. And depending on the scenario, you can choose your policy. So since this is a remote access scenario, we have chosen default remote access. And then you can select the authentication type. It can be either a pre-shared key. We also give you the option to go with the certificate as well. So if you're not happy with the pre-shared key security, you can always select a certificate as well. Then you go with the WAN port selection. So you select the local WAN port over here. So this is the WAN IP of this particular CyberOM. And you select the local subnet, which is the head office local subnet, which is 172.16.16.16, or any other subnet, whichever you are having in your network. Then you go and put the remote server IP address. So since this is a road warrior connection, the remote VPN server is any, because so that any client can connect from anywhere around the world because there is no fixed IP addresses to the client so they can connect from anywhere that's why the remote VPN server is an asterisk or any you're allowing NAT traversal and remote subnet you can either restrict it to that particular client subnet or else you can leave that to any as well in a remote access scenario however in a site-to-site -site scenario this remote subnet is going to be the other offices or other sites local subnet and then you select the user authentication whether you want to leave it disabled or you want to enable it as a client or server in case you enable it as a server cyberm will throw the xauth authentication prompt wherein the user will have to authenticate with their username and password after they enter their pre-shared key and that's it, you get an IPsec connection summary and you click on finish and then you can let your clients connect to that. So in case you are creating a remote access connection and you have got like 100 clients roaming, all you need to do is just create one tunnel and all the 100 clients can connect to the VPN and access their internal resources. So let's have a look at the VPN failover feature offered by CyberRoam. The VPN failover enables to provide an automatic backup connection for VPN traffic and provide always on VPN connectivity for IPsec and L2TP connections. So VPN tunnel allows you to access remote servers and applications with total security. With VPN auto failover, a VPN connection needs to be re-established when one of the two WAN connection drops. So you can only take advantage of VPN failover if you have more than WAN, one WAN connection. And if one of your WAN connection goes down, automatically the VPN is reconnected with the second WAN connection. So what are the advantages of VPN failover? It reduces the possibility of a single point of failure. It reduces the reliance on manual intervention to establish a new connection and it reduced the failover time of a VPN connection with redundant VPN tunnels and VPN monitoring. So we keep on monitoring the link and if we detect there is a link failover, you automatically route it to the other link. So in this particular screenshot, you can see the New York office have got two internet connection and somehow if this is down, automatically the VPN will be routed via this particular connection or VPN will be going through like this depending on whether this one is up or running if this is down this will be routed via this so depending on which internet links goes down automatically the tunnel will be connected with the other internet connection so in this scenario ideally since you have got two WAN links here and two WAN links at the remote office you'll be having four tunnels but you don't need to create four tunnels we give you a very simple automated configuration and you don't need to manually create all the four tunnels so this is how we do it so when you go to the IPsec connection you select all the connection type policy you select the action then you select the authentication type and here in the endpoint details where you specify the local WAN and the remote WAN that's where you can click on the plus icon 
and you go on adding the multiple WANs which you have here and map it with the other WAN connection as well. So you don't actually need to create four tunnels but you're actually adding four endpoints in the VPN failover settings in the endpoint details in your IPsec configuration. So let's have a look at the mobile VPN feature of CyberOM. So CyberOM offers mobile VPN capabilities for Apple iOS, for iPhone and iPad. You can use IPsec, L2TP or PPTP. And for Android devices, it offers you L2TP over IPsec. So users can use VPN using their existing iOS devices and there will be no change in functionality. They can connect to CyberOM with IPsec and access the internal resources very safely and securely. How do you configure that? You need to go to VPN and then you go to Cisco VPN Client. So you put in, you enable the Cisco VPN Client in CyberOM, you put in the WAN interface, put in the pre-shared key or authentication type, whether it's pre-shared key or certificate. You can put in a local and remote ID and you can select the allowed users with their usernames and you can assign an IP range and then you put in the DNS service and that's it from the configuration point of view from CyberOM. Now you need to go to your iPhone or iPad, you go to settings, go to general and go to VPN and click on add VPN configuration and then you configure the parameters on which server you're going to connect and what's the username and password you're going to connect with. That's pretty much it and you're automatically connected to CyberOM from your iPhone or iPad. Now on Android devices you need to configure L2TP so you go to CyberOM and give it a name give it a you select a policy you can go with our default L2TP policy as well you can put in the authentication details you can put in the remote network details like for the remote host it's an asterisk so that any client can connect you can allow NAT traversal you can select a remote LAN network as well if you want to restrict it to specific client subnets or else you can just put it as any so that anybody can client with any subnet doesn't matter and you can select the local port and remote port number and then you go to your Android device and configure it and click on connect. So that brings us to the labs. So we'll be doing lab 21 and 22. In lab 21 we'll be doing, we'll be creating an IPsec site-to-site -site configuration using pre-shared key and in lab 22 we'll be doing L2TP configuration with MSChef V2. So let's get down to the first lab which is 21. So we'll be creating an IPsec site to site. Let me log into the remote infrastructure of my lab. And I've got two CyberOMs here. So I've got a 10.206.1.111 and the other one is this. So I'll have to go to VPN first. Now I'll just show you the default policies out here. So in one side you can select head office and the other side for the branch offices we can go ahead with the branch offices. And this branch office policy has got an ability to reinitiate the tunnel automatically if in case the WAN goes down or the tunnel breaks up automatically it's going to reconnect back to the head office. So we'll go to the IPsec setting and we'll go to the connection and we'll click on add and I will name it as HO. And here the connection type, I'm not going to use remote access because that's for client to site. So I'll select site to site and I'll use the head office policy since it's the head office. And I'll select the action on VPN restart as respond only because we're going to get the connection initiated automatically from branch office. So I'll select the pre-shared key here and ensure that this pre-shared key is same on the other site as well. Now for the local endpoint details here the local will be the WAN port and the remote will be my remote offices or branch offices WAN port so that is 10.206.1.111 local subnet refers to your LAN subnet or DMZ subnet whatever access you want to give to the remote site so as of now I'm just choosing my LAN subnet as the local subnet so I will add IP host and I will say LAN subnet and I have to be very careful because I want to give my branch office access to my entire network so I'll select that as 172.16.0 with a class sorry pardon me for my typo 
So I'll select 172, 16, 16, 0 with the class C subnet mask. However, you can also opt to choose for an IP range or a specific IP, but I'm going to give access to the entire network. So now I'll click on OK to add this LAN subnet to my VPN zone. So here it's done. I'm not doing any natal local LAN since uh, this is a not a part of this course. It's a part of the CCNSE. So I'll go with the simple one. All right. So here in the remote LAN subnet, I'll have to add the branch office's LAN subnet. So I'll name it as remote LAN and I'll select it as network. And my branch office subnet is 173.16.16.0 class C. So I'll add that. And that's all from the VPN configuration over here. I'll click on OK. However, if you want to have an look at the advanced setting you can do that at your leisure time I'll just click on OK and I'll not activate it as of now I will first go to the other side and configure the VPN over here so I'll go to IPsec I will name it as BO since this is my branch office so in the connection type I will select site to site I will change the policy to default branch office remember this is branch an action on VPN restart, I'll set it to initiate since this is the branch office and it's going to automatically connect back to the head office in case the tunnel is down ever. Now I'll select the, type in the pre-shared key. Remember, it has to be the same pre-shared key which I mentioned in the HO. So I'll type that in. So I'll mention the local WAN port of this cyber room, and for the remote, I will type in my HO's WAN port. So that's my HO1 IP. Local subnet, here it has to be the LAN subnet of this particular branch office. So I'll click on add and I'll mention it LAN subnet. And I'll select the network and I'll give access to the entire network to head office as well. So I'll select 173.16.16.0, class C. I'll click on OK. For the remote LAN network, I have to mention it as HO's LAN. So I'll just say HO LAN and I will name it as I'll give the 172.16.16.0. Remember this was the subnet of my HO. So it's class C. I'll click on OK. Now I'll click on OK. Now I'll activate the connection from here. You can activate it at any time from anywhere. I'll now activate it at the head office as well. Now I'll try to connect from the branch office. So let me try and connect the VPN tunnel. And you see the green icon over here. And if I click on the subnet, see, you can see the subnets which are connected via the VPN. So let me have a look at the branch office as well. I'll refresh this page. And here also I get a green icon, which means its tunnel is connected successfully. And these are the subnets which are participating in the VPN tunnel. So that brings us to the end of this particular lab wherein we are doing site to site. Now let's go to the next lab wherein we'll be creating L2TP. So I'll go to L2TP. The first thing what you have to do is you have to enable L2TP and then you have to put in an IP range. So maybe I'll put it on 192.168.1.10 to 192, 168, 1.20. Maybe I want to give that in this IP range. So whenever the L2TP client connects, they'll be getting an IP address in this particular range I'm seeing here. For the DNS server, here I've got some local DNS, so I'm mentioning that. And I'm not adding any secondary DNS over here. I'll just click on Apply. Now the next step, what I have to do is, I have to go to Connection, and I have to add an L2TP connection. Now remember, L2TP in CyberOM happens over IPsec, so it's not pure L2TP. So I'll just name it as L2TP. I'll go with the default L2TP policy and I will leave it to action on VPN restart as respond only. I'll mention a key as well. The local WAN port has to be this CyberOM's WAN IP. 
So in remote, I put it under an asterisk so that anybody can client from their home. So this is for roaming clients. The client may be sometimes in other countries, sometimes maybe at their home or at hotels. By default, I'll leave the NAT traversal to enabled. And for the remote LAN network, I'll select that as any as well so that they can connect from any local subnet. And that's pretty much it. So you can have some advanced settings like disconnect when tunnel is idle if you want to do that. I'm not doing that. I'll just click on OK. So I'll activate the L2TP connection over here. And now once a client is connected, it will get a green icon over here. Now how do you configure L2TP from your laptop? So I'll just show it to you. I've got a WAN laptop here. So let me just try and configure it. So I'll open the network center. So I'll click on set up a new connection on network. I'll select the connect to your workplace option. I'll say use my internet connection and I'll set up an internet connection later. So I'll just name it as L2TP. And I'm not using any smart card authentication, so I'm not selecting any of that. I'll put in the username and password. Now, why I wanted to show you is that L2TP always ask you for a username and password. But did we do that? Did you select any user in the policy? No, we didn't. So let's go ahead and go to the configuration and here we'll have to add the member. So I'll just add John. So now John will be able to connect via L2TP to my connection. Now there is another way of adding member. What you can do, you can go to identity and you can go to users and you can click on any one user like John and Mary and here also you can select the L2TP, you can enable it and you can show it over here as well. You can give a specific IP address if you want to reserve any specific IP address for any specific user, you can do that from here. Or else, if you go back to L2TP and if you're applying or adding the members from here, they'll be getting an IP address, any IP address in this range. But if you want to reserve a specific IP address for a specific user, it's better go to Identity, Users, and put in the IP address and enable the L2TP policy over there. So now let's come back to the and finish it. So I will select it as John. I'll type in the password. And I'll click on Create. Now, I don't uh, want to connect now. So what I'll do, I'll show you some other settings now as well. So I've got a VPN connection here. I'll go to properties. Now see its name is L2TP. Here, type of VPN, I'll select it to L2TP. You can select it to optional encryption or else you can even set it to some something secure. Now the lab says you have to use MSCHAP V2. So you can uncheck any of this or no PAP, no CHAP. You can enable that and then you can go to this advanced settings and you can use the pre-shared key remember we set this up in the tunnel you have to enter the same pre-shared key so that's pretty much it from the connection side now one thing i'll just like to show you one last thing that if you only want to use specifically msjav v2 you can come down to the command prompt and you can select fire the command set VPN maybe I'll just expand it so that you can see it in a better manner so set VPN so you can press tab to get more options and you can say set VPN L2TP since I am selecting L2TP authentication these are some advanced settings if you only want to use any kind of specific encryption as you see in the screen if you just go ahead with any you can connect with any encryption but the lab says no, you have to go with MSJAV V2. So I'll just press MSJAV and I'll press tab and that's it. Now, if my clients are connecting, they have to use MSJAV V2. Otherwise, they won't be able to connect. So that brings us to the end of this lab. Let's continue with the presentation. SSL VPN. So what is an SSL VPN? It's a VPN which can be accessed via any web browser. So you can access your office internal resources through a web browser from PDFs, laptop, mobile devices. 
However, ultimately, there is another client software which you can also use to access this VPN as well. So it's easier to use and control to allow access to the corporate network from anywhere, anytime. And any device that has got a browser can access SSL VPN, unlike IPsec. So it provides the ability to create a point-to-point -point encrypted tunnels between remote employees and companies' internal network. Users' access to private network is controlled through his SSL VPN policy, while Internet access is controlled through his Internet access policy. So you can see a sample screenshot of a diagram wherein you can have got a lot of devices from where you can access your office internet access or office resources. You can access it from PDA, mobile phone, laptop, or you can be on a roaming employee traveling somewhere and you're accessing SSL VPN from a public Wi-Fi hotspot. And you can integrate the CyberRoom SSL VPN with any kind of Active Directory, LDAP, or Radius and then you can access your office resources like different applications, VOIP, documents, or else you can also have give access to your partners and employees at customer premises. And majority of this can be accessed from the browser itself. So there are three modes of access in SSL VPN in CyberRoom. The first one is the web access, which offers you limited proxy support for HTTP and HTTPS. Now, uh, web access means you can publish uh, web bookmarks, maybe your SAP server, maybe your office intranet access, which you can access via web browser uh, from your corporate office only. But when you're on the ROM, maybe you need to access your inventory, maybe you need to access your SAP server UI. So that's when you can use web access, which and you can host your resources on HTTP and HTTPS. And you don't need any special access permissions in web access. The second one is the application access mode, where you've got a tunnel support for HTTP, HTTPS, RDP, Telnet, SSH, and FTP. And imagine how good it is when you can access all these protocols just from your browser itself. So you need to do an RDP to your RDP server? Use a browser to do an RDP via application access mode. Now the browser has to run with an administrative privileges. So that's the only concern in an application mo access mode. So just ensure that your browser is running with administrative privileges. And the third method of access is the tunnel mode, which is via client software, which you need to download from CyberRoom appliance itself and you need to install it and all traffic will be tunneled via that client software same like IPsec. There are two modes of tunnel. One is a split which is a limited access which means when the client is connected via client software and is browsing any internet it will be via his normal internet connection but when he's accessing any office or corporate resources it will be tunneled through the VPN tunnel. And the other one is full access, where even the client's internet access will also be routed through the VPN tunnel and will be centrally monitored by CyberRoom via his corporate office. So when you go and configure SSL VPN in the web access mode, you have to enable this option, which is web access. And then you can give a small description and you can add a bookmark. So here you can publish your intranet.cyberom.com which is our internal website you can publish your SAP server inventory or whatever HTTP or HTTP resources you have to publish and then the roaming client or the user can log in and then can access this kind of HTTP or HTTPS or web resources via web access mode. The second one is the application access mode where you have to enable application access over here and then you have to publish the applications via your bookmark or URL and the URL changes like this the moment you select the protocol as RDP or Telnet or SSH so it, it just changes depending on what protocol you are selecting over here so here we have selected RDP and the URL you pointed to your IP address of your RDP server and then when you access the VPN via your web browser and you launch it in an administrative mode you can access RDP right from your browser itself. The same thing you can do with SSH or Telnet if you want to publish those resources as well. 
And the third mode is the tunnel access where you need to install the client. So you enable tunnel access and here you select whether you want split tunnel or full tunnel and then you give access to the selected host or networks. Let's say you'd like to give access to the WLAN subnet. You select this WLAN over here and put it over here. You want to give the user access to a specific server, create an object for that and put it put it over on the selected host. So whatever hosts are selected over here, the client will only be able to access these particular servers or networks which you have selected. Now by default, SSL VPN works on port number 8443 on CyberOM. So when you browse to the SSL VPN IP address colon 8443, you get a username password prompt and also you get to select the language. By default, it's in English. And if you wanted to have some non-English version, you can select that as well. Now for the end client SSL VPN access, remote users can download the SSL VPN client and configuration file from the SSL VPN portal itself once you log into the SSL VPN portal. All the downloadable components will be displayed only if the remote user is allowed the full access. The remote user will be displayed the list of all the bookmarks. User will also be displayed the URL address bar if allowed in the user SSL VPN policy. User can type the URL in the address bar to access other URLs than bookmarks as well. You can also configure it on your Android device and you can use OpenVPN. So you can import the profile and configure your OpenVPN in your Android device. If you want more information about how to configure it, you can follow the URL given here to give you detailed configuration on how to connect SSL VPN from your Android device. So that brings us to lab 23, which is the SSL VPN web access mode. So let's get to the lab. So let me remote into my lab infrastructure and let me go to SSL. So I'll first go to VPN and SSL. Now here I have to first set the tunnel access settings. So I'll select the appliance certificate and SSL client. I will use the appliance certificate as of now, but you can use any other third party certificate or any other certificate generated by CyberOM. So as you can see here, I've selected the client certificate as a plan certificate. And the, I'll go with the default IP lease. So it's same like L2TP, you can select any range in your subnet or out of subnet. It's better to select it out of subnet and you can choose any range. For the DNS, I will just go with the global DNS. However, if you have any local DNS, you can select that. And I'll enable the DPD and I will click on apply. Now just one more thing before I go to the next tab. You can use for the protocol as TCP or UDP. Now TCP is more reliable but a bit slower on the performance side. But if you go with UDP, it'll be a bit faster. But I've selected TCP because I want more reliable performance. The next step what I'll have to do is go to policy and add a policy. So I will say web access. Now there are three modes of tunnel as you have already seen in the presentation but the lab says we will do the lab for web access mode so I'll select web access and I'll scroll down. Under web access settings I have to select bookmarks but I haven't created any. So first let us go ahead and create bookmarks. So as of now I'll just click on apply but I'll come back to the policy and we'll select the bookmarks. So let's go to the bookmark and let's add some bookmark. So I will name it as Google. Now these bookmarks are mainly for accessing your internal web server or any other server, whatever you're posting or whatever you're hosting. I haven't hosted any specific internal server, but we will go with, there are some default protocols here, which you can see in the type. So you can select any of these protocols which you can host on the web access mode and application access mode. Now for the web access, HTTP and HTTPS access is supported. Rest of the protocols are supported in application access mode. So I'll go with HTTPS and I will type it as google.com. So now the bookmark is created. Let's come back to the policy and let me click on the policy and let's scroll down and here you see I've got the bookmark available over here. 
Now here is another option, enable arbitrary URL access. If I enable that, it will get an URL browser inside the portal wherein you can do safe browsing. So we'll get to that as well. Now I'll click on apply, but before that I'll also have to add the policy members. So I'll select John as well. Now the same thing, you can add the members from identity as well. I'll show it to you that as well. I'll click on apply now. Now I can go to identity, I can go to users, and I can click on Mary or John or any other user, and I can select a VPN, SSL VPN policy here. So I can even do that. So I'll come back to the VPN policy and this is how I have set up my web access policy. Now uh, just one more thing in case you want to customize your portal you can click on preview and this is how will your portal be looking like. So this is how it looks like in case you want to customize your company logo or you want to come customize your colors you can do that as well. So I'll close that up and let's see how we can access SSL VPN. So I'll browse to the public IP address of CyberOM and remember SSL VPN works on 8443. So I get the SSL VPN portal, I'll log in with the user John and I get the portal and see I've got the bookmark over here for web access google.com. If I click on this bookmark I will be encapsulated within the URL and it will be going to Google and now I'm doing browsing through that bookmark. So I don't want to take you to the Google anymore I'll just click on back and I'll just want to show you one more thing. So this is for the arbitrary URL access so wherein I can do safe browsing. So if I type in yahoo.com it is going to encapsulate me within the VPN tunnel. So that is what is being encapsulated via the VPN tunnel and we are doing safe browsing within an encrypted SSL tunnel. So that's all on in this lab. So let's continue with the presentation now. All right. So that brings us to the end of this module as well. And the next module which we'll be doing is QoS. So thank you for attending the presentation.